Hi, this is David Wicks, your instructor for EDTC 6433, Teaching with Technology. Uh, welcome to our course, and I'd like to take this time to introduce you to the syllabus for our course. So if you've logged into Blackboard, and you've gone over and you've clicked on information, uh, you will see our syllabus, our schedule, list of readings, and uh, what would be an extra article there that would go over some classroom technologies, uh, pros and cons of those technologies. So uh, let's just get started here. We'll click on the syllabus. So I'm just going to click on that link and it opens in a new tab for me and depending on which browser you're using it might ask you to just open the PDF uh, as a, a document on your desktop and that's that's fine. Uh, but once you have that document over open, uh, I'm going to go ahead and just make it take up uh, the screen a little bit better here so you can see it better. And you can see my contact information there. Uh, you can see a description of our course. I'm going to let you just read through those. And as we scroll down, here's where I want to start, and that's um, with this course, we're going to be using the practical and query model um, to uh, work through the five uh, ISTE standards for teachers. And so for every standard, there are five, as I mentioned, uh, you will uh, have a triggering event, which will be where the problem is defined and I'll be asking you questions you individually will be de decide what is the actual problem that needs to be solved here um, and then you will share that uh, individually in the um, in Blackboard um, using an assignment area and I'll uh, let you see what that looks like and then uh, once you've done that, uh, you'll move on to the exploration phase of, of uh, that particular standard. And in that, then you'll read some journal articles. Uh, these articles will be ones that I'm sharing in Blackboard. Just so that you're aware, the readings, um, some of the documents are rather lengthy, and I don't expect you to read them all. And I, I would expect you to find what's relevant to you as a primary teacher, as a special ed teacher, as a physical education teacher, you'll be sharing on a Google Doc some kind of resource as part of this exploration. So uh, in the first module that we'll be working on, uh, where it's kind of an overview, you will be sharing a favorite resource. So you'll be able to pick a favorite website or if you have a favorite classroom technology you'll be able to share that then um, we'll move from exploration to integration so we'll we'll have uh, gained some background and we'll now begin to apply it and so in the application part we'll begin uh, collaborating so uh, we have a discussion board where you'll be able to um, communicate with each other and discuss uh, what you think the, the problem is and what you think a possible solution is to the problem. During some weeks uh, we'll have a real-time discussion on Thursday nights and that's an optional discussion. I'll talk more about it later. And then we will meet face-to-face -face, and during that face-to-face -face time is another place where uh, we'll find this integration where we'll be collaborating looking for possible solutions. Finally, we'll have resolution. We will um, be sharing solutions by completing projects. We'll be talking about the projects in the course and you'll also be sharing your um, understanding of the, the five standards in blog posts uh, in your B portfolio. So with that, let's move to just understanding what we'll be using as a triggering event for each uh, of the modules. And again, the modules revolve around the standards. You can see weeks one through ten here, and we actually have a short week um, that uh, I reference as week one in the schedule document, and, and here I say week one is the really the second week, not to be too confusing there. We have 
10 weeks um, where we're going to be uh, focusing uh, two weeks at a time on each of the uh, five um, standards, ISTE standards for teachers. ISTE is the International Society for Technology and Education. They have the NETS, which are the National Educational Technology Standards, and almost every state has adopted these and then maybe made their own modifications, including Washington. In your first uh, week, um, this short week, uh, one of the documents that I share with you is the Washington State standards, and those are based on the ISTE standard. Also, as we're looking at these triggering events, so I'm going to be asking you questions that you will personalize. You'll be determining what problem you need to solve um, as a, uh, again, as a middle school teacher or uh, art teacher, you'll, you'll be see, looking at um, the particular standard and uh, facilitate and inspire student learning and creativity and you'll be trying to figure out how do I do that as a teacher. Once we've kind of said what is the problem in this triggering event, um, you'll move on to the exploration and this is where uh, in our course you'll find various readings and then um, the other part of the exploration is this resource sharing so six times during the term one this short week and then one time for each of the standards uh, you will be sharing a resource. So this week you get to share any uh, resource you want to share related to instructional technology. And then next, starting next week, um, you will be looking for a resource to share related to Standard 1. And in the third week, uh, you'll be looking for a resource to share w related to Standard 2 and so on. So I give you a quick uh, checklist of how these will be uh, scored and um, as I'm looking at that checklist um, I'm noticing that the um, points are totaling up um, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 instead of 20 so uh, that that actual resource sharing uh, is off and I'll probably just uh, double those so that it, it does come out to 120 points uh, and apologize for that mistake there I just see as we're looking at this you will be filling in a Google Doc and you will be actually um, submitting this information. So I've given you an example in the first module to, to see how this will look. And so uh, you will submit your information, you will submit the date, your first and last name, and the name of the resource. You'll provide a res uh, description of the resource. Try to describe how it might address one of the ISTE standards. So this first week, you're looking at all five standards, and you're thinking of your technology and how could it actually help you address um, one of those standards. And then you will, from there, uh, oh, and by the way, I'd also like you to, on that second one, think about how it would act actually help you address one of your content standards. So um, when you're thinking of the state uh, standards for your uh, particular discipline, you'd want to um, include that type of information as well. And then the third area there is, is that you're going to somehow uh, give us some kind of a positive attribute of that. So if you're looking at something like a smart board uh, during this first week, you would think of a reason why you think um, smart boards are valuable to education. And uh, bonus points if it's, if it's research-based, um, but, but it can also be just something that you see as an advantage. It makes you more efficient. The students like it better. Uh, try to go into some details so that we can really understand uh, what the benefit of this particular technology is. And then what's the, what's the downside? Uh, is it too expensive? Is it difficult for people to learn how to use? Um, does it have a short life? What is the, the negative attribute of the particular technology that you're sharing? And then who's it for? What's the grade level? Um, what discipline uh, uses this particular technology? And then finally, you're sharing um, the, a link so people can go explore it for themselves. So in some cases, the link will take them directly to where they could download whatever this technology is. Um, might be a, an app, a mobile app, 
or in other cases it might take them to a, um, a website that not only talks about smart boards in terms of the company smart board but all interactive whiteboards. And it's important here to note that then later in the discussion you're going to want to come back to this Google Doc and review what other people have shared. Um, find something, uh, you don't have to test them all, but find one, find two that you might um, see as being valuable for your discipline, for your grade level, for your students. And if it just doesn't seem like that's the case, um, then you could find one that um, you know is not something that could be used with your students. And so maybe it's not age appropriate, developmentally it's not appropriate. Um, uh, whatever the reason, you're going to list um, later in, in the discussion why um, th there's an issue with that particular resource. Then we're moving on to integration, and we have three ways that we um, we want to collaborate and try to brainstorm solutions. And those are first our Thursday night live. And so when you look at the schedule document, you'll see that we're every week that we don't meet face to face, we have a one hour Thursday night live session, and it's typically 9 p.m. on Thursday. Uh, it's also possible that I might need to change that time. Uh, you know, one, if I find out that absolutely no one in the class can meet at nine o'clock on Thursday nights, um, then I'll, I'll change the time. This isn't required. This is something that I'll record and you can watch later. Uh, so just know that uh, I'd encourage you to attend. It's your questions are extremely valuable. You could even feed me your questions ahead of time if you want me to. Uh, address them and have other people interact with them but this will be an online conference um, and hopefully uh, many of you can attend I know you're uh, busy teaching and it's a late night uh, but hopefully you'll find this to be something that's of value and also we've got this quarter we're teaching this course in a blended format and by definition uh, a blended course uh, has at least 30 uh, percent of its time in one format. So in our case we have 70 percent of the course is fully online and 30 percent of the course will be taught face to face. Uh, and so you will on three Saturdays be required to come nine to noon. Uh, we'll be meeting in the new active learning classroom in Cremona. Uh, we'll, be get, we'll, we'll be doing things we can't do uh, online. So that's the time we'll be doing face-to-face -face collaboration. We'll be investigating some technologies hands-on uh, so that we can uh, make really good use of those those three hours together. Then the final um, way that we're integrating that we'll collaborate um, looking for solutions is through our discussion. And we have discussions going on every week except for the weeks we meet face to face so that's a a place where we don't um, uh, you know when we're talking about this 70 30 split uh, we are not having a, an online discussion uh, during the week when we meet face to face you will be asked to uh, participate in those discussions you're you'll be coming with um, what you think the problem is um, from the triggering event You'll be coming with resources that you think are important, with um, information from the journal articles that you've read, uh, and you will be throwing those ideas out and hopefully coming up with uh, solutions that you might have for how do we help students be creative with technology. You know, somebody might have a resource that they're sharing that a tool that can be used for that. Uh, someone might have a, a particular instructional technology that um, is student-centered and allows students to be creative. So these are the types of things that we'll throw out. We'll have these ideas um, and hopefully you'll walk away from that online discussion with one or more possible solutions for your own situation. For each discussion, uh, you'll be self-assessing, and there are um, criteria um, listed here, um, six of them, and for each one, I'll just quickly go through. The first one talks about 
uh, demonstrating that you've done the reading. So you will make a post uh, where you indicate that part of your solution includes something that you read about and you'll share about that reading. So you'll make a quote, but definitely you'll make reference to the author of the article, um, making it very clear to us that you've done the reading. Um, you'll be contributing uh, at least one post that relates to uh, one of the resources that was um, shared. So uh, it could be your resource, could be uh, someone else's resource, but you will be looking at those resources and you will uh, share how a particular resource may address that standard that we're covering that, that week. And then you will engage with each other. So if someone shares something, uh, that you find uh, relevant to, to uh, your uh, particular discipline or grade level, um, you can interact with them and maybe extend their idea. So this doesn't just this isn't just saying I like your idea, good job, um, or I don't think your solution will work. It has to take it further than that. So I like your solution, and here's some other possible ways that you know. I, here's some ideas I have that that you might appreciate that would extend what you're doing, or I'm not sure your solution will work, and here's why I don't think it will work. Here, have you considered this? You want to make sure that you've met all the posting deadlines. There's always a starting deadline that you need to post by, and then there's an ed ending deadline, and those are listed in the schedule. And it's really important that you meet these deadlines because that's um, letting your classmates know that you value um, their input, that you've, you've taken the time to post something that they can interact with. Your ready to interact with, with what they're sharing because you've uh, made sure that you've met the deadline. Uh, you also want to make sure that you've read all posts and by reading all posts you need to read all posts by the deadline. So if someone posts late um, uh, and by late I mean after um, the discussion is ended uh, you're not responsible for reading that. No one needs to interact with those. That the person may have a reason why they had to post late, but uh, we need to move on to the next topic at that particular time. And then you should follow appropriate netiquette. When you're engaging with other people on their posts, uh, we're critiquing ideas, not people. So uh, this is no place to tell someone that they have a, a bad idea. Uh, it's a place to say, I don't agree with what you're saying, and here's why. And then, um, as far as just some general notes about discussion, uh, you want to make sure that um, each, each time we have a discussion, again, there's five, that you make at least three posts. It is oh so important that you don't make these long posts, okay? Uh, no one wants to read your essay uh, as a post. Uh, what you should do instead, if you've got four or five ideas out of reading an article, um, pick the best two and share those as separate posts. Give someone a paragraph to interact with. End your um, post with a question so that you, you're attracting attention to it, that people will want to read it and they're being invited to uh, interact with you on that post. You can post more than three times. Uh, we're not looking for anybody to, to, to go crazy. We don't want hundreds of posts in a discussion. But at the same time, we do uh, value um, you know, the interaction. And it, it can really help um, the discussion if you post ahead of the deadline. If everyone waits till uh, midnight on Thursday to share their first post and everybody waits till midnight on uh, Sunday to share a second post, uh, there is no discussion. And you should be checking in three to five times a week and when you do, um, you know, there should be a handful of posts for you to read and interact with. In terms of our resolution, this is where we're moving now into I've heard other people's ideas, I've seen how they think they want to solve this problem, now I want to solve it myself. In this case, we're going to have um, six posts. The first post is just one that, that you're making this first week where you're 
letting us know what you think at the start of this class, uh, where you're at. Um, I'm not looking for a long one on this first one, but after that, when we're talking about um, ISTE standard one through five, then these should be um, well thought out responses uh, with uh, good evidence supported with, with artifacts. Some of the things that uh, you'll want to make sure that you do, uh, one, it's going to be in your WordPress blog. Now there's some people in the course who possibly don't have blogs. Uh, I want you to create one. There are tutorials online for how to create a blog. In this particular case, um, you're, you're sharing a link to your uh, your B portfolio at the beginning of the term. At the end, when you're finished with your post, you're going to post the link to your post, not the link to your blog, but the link to your post in Blackboard, um, which will let me go directly to the page where that post is made, and I'll be able to, to look at your response. So I'll talk more about that in another uh, screencast. We want our posts to be timely. Uh, so when it's listed in the uh, schedule that it needs to be posted by, please make sure that it's done by then. You will be interacting with other people's blogs. You're going to find a blog buddy and you are going to comment on that person's um, post. And so you want them to finish their blog post on time so that when you're finished with yours, you can just quickly look at each other's, give each other feedback, and move on. Um, you want to um, make reference to one of the articles that you read in your post. Um, you'll want to reference a resource. It can again be your resource and I, th I think in here I say a, a reference another student's resource. Well, um, I think if uh, you f have struggle, or if you struggle with finding an a resource from another student that is uh, um, uh, something that uh, would help you meet the standard, then I would encourage you to go ahead and use your own. Uh, you want to relate it to your instruction. You want to talk about how that this particular um, uh, standard relates to your instructional practices. And then you want to demonstrate that you have understandings of the main concepts of the standards. You'll need an artifact. I provide projects um, that you can use for the artifacts for this. So you could give a screenshot of something that you're working on or um, discuss it, give the URL to it. Your heading should be meaningful. So rather than saying um, ISTE standard for blog post, think of it more like a, an article in the newspaper and how important the heading is at grabbing your attention. You need to tag, you need to categorize, and you need to make sure you reference the standards. You should, ref you should tag it with at least two meaningful keywords. Um, so if it's reflection and cooperative learning that are two meaningful key terms, then uh, that describe your post. You'll also want to tag it with um, our course ID so that it's easy to find all the posts uh, from this particular um, course. And you'll want to make sure that you tag it with um, the ISTE standard that you're working on. Finally, you'll want to categorize it by one or more of your program standards. So uh, if you're in the School of Education, you should have a program standard that's uh, related to technology, that's one way to categorize it, but hopefully there's some integration. Hopefully you'll find where it crosses over to another one of your standards. Uh, and then in terms of interaction, this is where you're um, writing a, a thoughtful comment on one of your uh, peers' um, uh, blogs and and I want you to find a blogging buddy and it's even possible if like there's three of you that are all elementary teachers and the three of you want to get together and and person A comments on person B's person B comments on person C's and person C comments on person A's uh, that's that's fantastic I, I'd like you to stay as a group throughout the course um, this way I think will be a, a helpful way for you to kind of see each other's growth um, as you were uh, going through the course. And let me know if you have questions on that. Um, I will be grading those.
And then uh, another place where we're going to uh, show evidence, we're going to have this resolution, this solution, is in uh, five projects. So we'll have a project for each standard. So the first project is something that we'll be doing, um, working on uh, in the class when we meet face to face, and this is a digital storytelling video. So this is a, an individual activity. This is you. You are going to um, come up with a topic for your own um, story and it's uh, about a, a three to five minute narrative and you will be creating a video. Um, so there will be images that are displayed on the screen as you're um, narrating your, your video. Uh, the second is a, a web quest, and we're going to be using Bernie Dodge's Quest Garden tool to create the web quest. Uh, it's a great tool to use, easy to use. We'll talk about that some in class, uh, but it'll be one that you'll, you will do individually outside of class. The third project um, is the collaborative project. We'll begin this um, fairly soon after the course gets going and you will be working with people who are you're sitting with in class so hopefully we can find groups I'm looking for groups of about four uh, who can work together um, to create a, a, a website that will address one of the standards and so I'm going to assign each group a standard we're looking to have five groups five standards so at the end of the course uh, we'll all have five websites um, that will give us more information on each of our standards. Uh, number four then is a digital citizenship handout. This will be a fairly simple project, but you're going to look, um, and it could, a handout is the term I use, but you could end up making this a video clip. Um, it could be a, some kind of a poster, uh, but um, you're looking to create something that you can share with either students or your colleagues that ha would help them better understand digital citizenship issues. So it could be something on plagiarism, it could be something on uh, cyberbullying, uh, but you'll pick some kind of a digital citizenship topic uh, and create a, a handout, a poster, uh, a video clip um, that will help um, students or um, teachers better understand that issue. And then the fifth one is also, a, I think, a fairly straightforward and easy project, and that's um, one where you're going to demonstrate evidence of participation in an online educational community. And so you, this can either be something that an educational uh, community like Classroom 2.0 that is uh, has a, a primary focus in the use of technology in teaching, or it could be um, an online group that's um, all art educators. And so you're going to join a community and make some kind of, give me some evidence that you've participated. So maybe you ask a question on a discussion forum and somebody interacts with you, or maybe you answer someone's question. Uh, the grading scale is straight points. Your points will be divided by the total points, and that will give you a percentage, and then it will follow the standard um, uh, grading um, scale for the uh, university. In my role as an instructional technologist, I work with faculty on the use of Blackboard and other technologies, SPU faculty, so there will be times I'm showing them something that I'm doing in my course. Um, and in, those, in that kind of a situation, I am careful to never show them um, personal um, information about you. Uh, I don't show them my actual grade center, uh, grade book. Disabilities. Uh, if you have a disability that will impact your performance in the course, um, please contact me and so we can discuss this and, and make sure that you have uh, equal access to everything that you need in the course. Um, happy to accommodate uh, any requests of that, of that nature. If you have any other questions about the syllabus, please ask those on the discussion board. And for now, I think we have covered pretty much everything that I can think of. So I'm going to wish you a, a good day and uh, look forward to meeting you in person soon. Goodbye.